This video is the first in a series I plan on making looking at the arguments passed to read CSV from the Pandas library. I'd like to go argument by argument to demonstrate and explain how each one works and what possible values can be passed to each one. On the top left of my screen, you can see the CSV I will be working from. You'll notice there are four columns and just under 15 rows. Some of the rows are blank and some of them are missing information. There is also a footer row at the end of the page. On the bottom left, you will see the specific arguments I'm going to pass read CSV to bring this data set into Python as a data frame. Here we have a generic read CSV statement only containing the file name that I'm using. I can execute it and seeing here we have the expected output. Let's start by moving through these arguments one at a time and I think you'll find they make a lot of sense and are very easy to implement. First is headers. This argument expects an integer value. That value signifies the row we want to use as the header row. Read CSV expects the first row to be a header by default, but that isn't always the case. Still, let's start off with header equals zero signifying the first row. As you can see, nothing changes with the output. If our header is located on the third row, say, we could change header to be equal to two. Now you see our first row of data has become the column names of the data frame. You can even pass a list of integers to this argument, having two rows of column names. Let's pass the actual headers and the first row of data as a list to the headers argument. Here you can see two header rows. This isn't very practical, and I haven't seen it implemented in the real world, but it is possible to do. The next argument is names. Names allows you to explicitly name the column headers. It is important to note that you are required to name all columns. Watch what happens when I try to name only a few column headers. The data frame doesn't know what to do with the data and it provides the last two columns with the names that I've supplied. Let's give all four columns new names. And here you can see the new named columns that are different from the CSV. Next up, we have index call. This argument expects an integer value or a column name and specifies which column will take the place of the index. For integer values, it takes in the column names as a list starting with zero. Let's pass zero for the ID column. And here we can see ID has taken the place of the data frames index. It also takes a string of text. Let's assign item as the index. Notice that this value doesn't have to be unique but it is best practice to choose a column that is for your index. You can also pass a list of integers or text, making the index a type of composite key, something like you might see in a SQL database. Let's bring together ID and item as an index. Here we have a composite key in our data frame. You'll now notice that ID and item have taken the place of the index. The next argument, use calls, specifies which columns of the CSV you would like brought into the data frame. It expects the column names as a list or a single string in a list object, if you are just bringing in one column. Let's bring in just item and price. Here we can see the expected output of the two columns. How about just price? Let's pass it as a list object with one value. And there you go. The next argument, skip rows, identifies which rows you do not want to include in your data frame. The argument expects an integer or a list of integers. Our CSV has two rows that are blank. Skip rows can be a good way to remove them for us. Let's pass one and five within a list to the skip rows argument. Here we can see our data frame without the blank rows. Passing it a single integer operates a little bit differently. Let's pass just one to the argument. Here you can see we are skipping just one row. Passing a single integer to the argument tells Python how many rows to skip at the top of the CSV. It's not specifying which row you want to be skipping. To demonstrate this further, let's skip five rows. Here we have all of our rows except for the first five. Moving to our next argument, 
n rows, we will be specifying how many rows of the CSV you would like to bring into memory. It expects an integer value. This is good for files that are prohibitively large or if you're just trying to select a small sample of the data. The number of rows passed does not include the column headers. Let's bring in the first four rows of our data. Here you can see our first four rows with the headers on top. The next argument is skip blank lines. This one doesn't currently work, but let me show you how it is intended to be used. This argument is binary. That means it accepts a true or false value. Let's pass true. In this output, we see that unfortunately, the NAN values still exist, but that's okay. There is a simple data frame function that can resolve this problem for us. We can use the drop na function and pass it the how parameter, specifying all. All means that we want to remove rows that have an nan value in every single cell of that row. There, we see how this works. Now, if we want to drop all rows that had any nan values in any cell of the row, we simply drop the how argument. And here we are presented with a data frame with no nan values. Next up is the on bad lines argument that tells Python what to do when an error occurs reading a row. I'm going to insert an error in this data set using the notepad application. If I were to do this in Excel, the problem would not show itself. Pandas would just give me an unnamed column that has mostly blanks except for the one error that I'm inserting in one row. I'll add the letter X to the end of the first full line of data. We now have more values in this row than we do headers. This is going to throw an error if I try to make it a data frame. Here the error is telling me exactly what I just did. I put in an extra field and it's saying that it expects four fields in line three, but it saw five, that extra X that I just added. On bad lines accepts three different values. The first value is error and it is the default. It is what I just showed you. It outputs exactly what I just demonstrated. The second is warn. This warns the user that something was caught, but the rest of the document was loaded in as a data frame anyway. The third argument is skip. It functionally operates the same as warn, but the warning message does not get displayed. Now I will remove the error I introduced and move on to the final argument. The final argument to review is skip footer. This argument removes a specific number of rows from the bottom of the data set. It accepts an integer value. We have a single row as our footer in this specific document, so let's pass one as the argument. Here we can see the data frame without the final row included. Don't worry about the warning that populates when we run the cell. It's just telling us that it's defaulting to the Python engine to perform the work. So that's how to work with reading in columns and rows into a data frame using the function read CSV. Let me bring the arguments I've written back into a cell here and zoom in a bit so that we can see them better. And as a quick overview, headers is the row with the column name values. Names provides other names to our columns. Index call specifies which column to use as the data frame index. Use calls identifies which of the columns you want to include in the data frame. Skip rows identifies which rows you do not want to include in the data frame or tells Python how many rows at the top should be skipped. N rows is the amount of rows to include after the header. Skip blank lines skips all empty lines, though it doesn't currently work. The alternative for this is to use the data frame function drop na. On bad lines determines how Python will react when it catches an error reading the CSV. And finally, skip footer is the amount of rows to remove from the bottom of your data set. Thank you for watching. I hope this was informative. I am planning on reviewing some more of the arguments for read CSV in the future. Please let me know if you'd be interested in more videos like this and hit subscribe to catch more videos like this coming to this channel.